welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today, at the request of Patreon subscriber and community mod King of the Depths, I'm playing Vintage Countervine. This is, in my humble opinion, one of the coolest decks that exists because it doesn't play magic in the way that you would normally expect, while at the same time not completely ignoring normal magic the way Dredge does. What we're trying to do here is use Bazaar of Baghdad as a card draw engine while adding threats to the board slowly but surely in some cases, and quickly and devastatingly in other cases. Your nut draws with this deck is like tap Bazaar of Baghdad, discard three Venge Vines, cast two Hollow Ones, and then you put 20 power into play on turn one. And the grindy draws with this deck, they use Squee, Goblin Nabob, and Master of Death, both of which return to your hand during your upkeep if they're in your graveyard, to mitigate the effect of Bazaar of Baghdad. And then you're playing kind of a tempo control deck, that's drawing three cards a turn. When you tap Bazaar, discard three squeeze, and then you get all those squeeze back next turn. This is basically tap, draw two cards with some extra steps involved. And when you're in that kind of game, it might settle into something as innocuous as one of your discards. You discard two squeeze in a basking root walla. Now you have a threat in play. But your hand is a mind break trap, mental misstep, force of will, force of negation. And it makes it really hard for the opponent to play the game, even though you're not pressuring that fast. And we get this whole spectrum of modes, whether we need to play control or just yeet out aggro like a typical bizarre deck. This deck really made possible by Modern Horizons sets. Modern Horizons 1 had Master of Death in it. Or no, this is 2, right? Yes, this is 2, my bad. Modern Horizons 2 had Master of Death, which gives you the second squee that also happens to be blue for all your forces. And Modern Horizons 1 gave us Force of Vigor and Force of Negation for 8 additional pitch interaction spells in the colors that this deck wants to be anyway. This is kind of a brilliant construction of, you could call them design mistakes, or you can call them unique cards that over the full history of Magic, we have so many that they're not unique anymore and you could build a whole deck around them. But I think this deck's super cool. Weaknesses of this deck are primarily Lavinia, Azorius Renegade, and Tabernacle of Pendravail. Tabernacle's tough because you're a deck with no real mana. You have four wastelands and a strip mine that can tap for colorless. And I suppose if the game has gone extremely wrong, you could cast a serum powder, but that's not really a thing I plan for. So Tabernacle on just a raw board is Plague Wind, and it's Plague Wind every turn until you find a wasteland or strip mine to deal with it. So the counterplay to that is you just sit a wasteland and play if you suspect Tabernacle, then you can waste it on their turn when they play it and untap and not have to worry about the trigger. That's one of the things we're going to be doing, especially in sideboard games. And then Lavinia, all we can really do is play Caracas. Because the other answers to creatures in the deck, Pyrokinesis, countered, and no way we're ever going to have six lands. Fury, countered. Snapback, countered. It's really Caracas or bust at that point. So we're using tech lands to answer a small number of things that we specifically care about in the format. It's a tight little package. It can be a murder machine. It can be a card advantage machine. Sometimes it's both. And that's what we're really going for. This is Countervine from King of the Depths. Let's do it. The NYSE Open is a prestigious, long-running vintage tournament based out of New York City. It's returning again this summer, June 22nd, 2024, in Plainview, New York. This 15 proxy event has a $500 entry. That's a lot of money, but what are we playing for? First place gets a Black Lotus. Second through eighth place get Time Twister, Time Walk, and all five Moxin. At 115 players, a playset of Bizarre Baghdad is added to the prize pool. At 135, four Mistress Workshops. At 155, four Foil Gaia's Cradle. This prize pool is better than Eternal Weekend. If you think it's worth playing for, sign up for the event on Melee.gg or use the link in the video description and I will definitely see you there. We're on the play for round one against a Luris strategy. Good chance Lavinia is in this deck. I have to mulligan this hand. This is a situation where you need Bizarre Baghdad to play the game, 
and my second seven doesn't have one either. Mulligan. Okay, here we go. I got two of them here. Definitely keeping this. Bottom, Noxious Revival. I don't think I'll need that because it's generally there to play against Wasteland to give you more bazaars, and I have two. And I think Force of Will's probably busted. If I so let me do an actual count because bizarre math is not something I do a lot of. If I bottom force, then I have one, two, three, four, five cards in my hand. I play bizarre, then there's four. I tap bizarre, then there's six. Then I have to discard three of them. And that would be Rootwalla, Rootwalla, Mystery Card. Or no, I'm if I keep force, I don't have a Rootwalla. It would be Rootwalla, second bizarre, mystery card. And then I can play Hollow One and pass with Rootwalla. Hollow One in play and force blue card backup if I draw a blue card. Or I could just send it and not have a Force of Will in my deck or in my hand. Send it on the Rootwallas. Okay, I'm going to go that way. Bazaar, Tapos. How about a Vengevine? All right, end up with Force Blue card anyway. You can't stop me, nerds. Discard two Rootwallas. And now I actually have the decision of do I want to go all in and discard my bazaar or give up my first blue card and I think I go all in here root walla root walla and even though they never went to the graveyard I did discard them so hollow one cost zero they got a force of will for that unfortunately force of negation does not counter that on my turn that costs them a force of negation of their own Urza saga manifold key I think I can let that resolve. Force of Vigor. Okay. I am not going to tap my Bazaar here. Because I'm currently holding Force Blue card. And tapping Bazaar is card negative. And if I'm going to get over the finish line, I need some cards to do it with. Until I find like a Squee or a Vengevine or something, I'm probably not going to tap these. Oh, that's tough. I'm going to misstep this because that keeps cards in my hand. That can name Bazaar Baghdad and then I'm just not doing anything. This is also a really interesting bizarre deck because sometimes it's correct to bizarre in your opponent's end step instead of your own turn. Like if you have Master of Death in your hand and you're not sure if you need to pitch it for a force or do something different with it. Okay, so Force of Vigoring would be busted here. I'm just going to go to my turn. Found a Root Walla. That I'm okay tapping bizarre into. And in case I hit Vengevine, I am going to do it now. A Rootwalla, Force of Negation, and Chalice of the Void have to go. Because I am in on Team Force of Vigor right now. And in their upkeep, I'm going to zap the two Sagas. And hope that they don't Black Lotus Time Vault. Bang, bang. Pitch the green card. Hope this works. They've used a lot of permission already. They cannot currently make a Construct because they only have one mana. Uh, Force Blue card was the last two cards in your hand. Shit. That's really bad for me. Now they can tutor a Mox with the first Saga and then make two Constructs with the second Saga, and it's going to be real hard to get up ahead of that. Tough beats. That Force Pitched Paradoxical Outcome, that's at least good to know about for sideboarding. They grab Black Lotus with that. They can make a Construct with their floating mana. And it's a big one. Okay, so I got to get myself up to Force of Vigor green card again to win this game. Oh, they put Lurus in hand. Yeah, that's so much better than anything else that could have happened. Now they get a Black Lotus every turn, and they have a blocker. Lurus is busted, in case you, you didn't know. They could also just pay the needle by Bazaar. All right, yeah, we're good. Okay, it took two Pithing Needles and two Forces, but they did have those. This deck might have Lavinia in it. I don't think I play any of these other cards. And Ghost Quarter is another way to hit a Saga, I suppose. Chalice is nuts. In this matchup, knowing that they're a PO deck, probably shave a misdirection. They might not have much land destruction, which makes Noxious Revival less important, but it's also one of a small number of green cards for Force of Vigor, which is a very important card. And if I'm bringing Ghost Quarter, that can destroy one of the main targets that I would be Force of Vigoring, which is Urza Saga. It's possible maybe I'm supposed to back off of Rootwalla. Like one less blazing root walla. Keep all the baskings because they're green. And just kind of do that. Yeah, I'm going to do it this way. Let's try it out. I'm not going to bring in Leyline of the Void just for Luris. Hopefully, 
No Dead Before That Matters. Or at least that's the game I have to try to play. For the record, Lurus PO or Lurus Saga decks are way more my speed and vintage than Bizarre decks. Of course, open to constructive and well phrased feedback in the comments from Bizarre Experts if you're out there. Shout out to Fire Truck Moto. That's a YouTube channel. If you like this deck, he plays a lot of Bizarre decks. I got to meet him and hang out with him in Eternal Weekend Prague last year. That's M O D O. Fire Truck M O D O. This one is a Molly Serum Powder. I'm going to powder this. The way Serum Powder works is you bottom a card, then you powder. And I have to decide which one of these cards I want to still be in my deck rather than in exile. I think it's Force of Will. It's either Force of Will or Force of Vigor. I'm going to put Force of Will on the bottom and then powder six cards and then mulligan back up to seven cards because that's how this works. Mulligan. Come on now. Mulligan. Okay, uh, I am going to keep this hand with bazaars in it or a bazaar in it. Bottom powder. One of the wastelands and i think it's noxious revival and i do have a master of death in my hand right now which i might need to force something so i'm gonna do the thing i said where sometimes it's right to hold the bazaar and activate it later rather than on your own turn mock sapphire soul ring bathing needle shit <laughs> okay bizarre in response and i did find a force i have to lose a hollow one to do this I guess, like, importantly, I could have had a hollow one and play in a Master of Death in my graveyard and just try to beat down through the needle. But this is, like, not even good, but I don't think I could beat this card. Cast with Madness, and then Force of Negation, the needle. With this busted vintage combo deck still at five cards in their hand, I am very worried that I still might just die right now. And then that'll be a question for the ages. Just having a, come on, they got me so good. Okay, well, I'm going to die here. There is, the only chance I have here is that three cards in their hand are totally blank. That doesn't even matter because they're a Luris deck. I was going to say, if their three cards in hand are totally blank and they brick for the rest of the game, and I draw Force of Vigor green card in the next two draw steps, maybe we're still playing, but they could just... Grab Luris this turn, cast Luris the following turn, then they're at winning the combat race. Totally state, not only stable, but winning the race. Oh, Demonic Tutor. Yeah, we don't need to keep playing. We're dead. Okay, that was a tough beating. Uh, I think game one was close and came down to multiple pitch spells plus a potent main deck hate card. And then game two, they just had my number. I molded a four, and then they had two big needles on turn one. Sure. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the play in round two against another Luris strategy. This card's really good. We're going to see a lot of it. Got a mulligan this hand. I'm going to powder this hand. And pitching four counter spells, I think, is tough. But I think I'd rather have Master of Death in my deck as far as engines to grind with. Okay, I'm going to powder... Put Master on the bottom, then see a new 7, then I'm going to mulligan this one. Off we go. The Bizarre Life. Mulligan again. We did it. Keep. How many do I have to put? 3 to the bottom. Okay. I'm going to put Root Wall of Force of Negation, and it's either Mind Break Trap or Force of Will. Mind Break Trap can do stuff on its own without having to pitch my Master of Death. But Force of Will counters anything. I'm going to bottom the trap and hope that I have time to figure this out. Because I do have two rebuys in hand here. If they just don't do something on turn one that I'm required to Force of Will, then I could start grinding. Starting with a Preordain, I welcome this pace of play compared to the, the last round. This might be a Breach deck. Luris decks are usually Demir or Azorius. 
and seeing Volcanic Island is a little suspicious. Activate Bazaar in the end step, and a full payout that I'm very happy with. Don't care about Serum Powder, and I get the other two back. Get this back, get this back, pay one life, draw a card. A Root Walla is in my hand now with Squee. I get I have two free discards here in Squee and Ruwala. If I find another blue card, I'm happy to discard Master. I think it's time to apply some pressure. Another Squee, we did it. Keep the Master of Death in my hand. Now I have Force blue card, Force of Vigor green card, and my engines online. This is something that did not occur in our last match at all. I don't think we ever recurred a single Graveyard Idiot, which is the reason for the deck existing. There's a Saga. I'm going to respond to the trigger and kill that in Mox Pearl right now before it can tap for mana. Force Pitching Lurin revealed. Force Pitching Master of Death. Let's see who comes out on top of this. If I win this fight and they pass with one land in play, and I'm drawing three cards a turn, I'm going to like that board. If they win this fight and I have nothing in hand to their active versus saga, I'm going to feel bad. But I do get a lot of looks at Wasteland next turn. Cool. That's how this deck's supposed to play. Now let's apply some pressure. Give me them squeeze. Force of will. Draw. Ayo. Vengevine. Squee. Squee to the graveyard. Unfortunately, I don't have a second creature to cast for the Vengevine, but clock's ticking. It'll show up eventually. Shields are down, though. If they want to you know, Black Lotus Underworld breach me, they're good to go. Looted Delta. Ancestral Recall. Yep. These are the cards we don't get to play. Mox in Ancestrals, the things, the Soul Ring, the things that buried us last round and are catching them up this round. Not allowed in our deck. Sensei's Top. That is a one minute artifact that I'm much more happy to see than Pithing Needle. And this does look like Grixis Breach. We see Underground Sea here as well. Wasteland's pretty good. I'm going to tap Bazaar, see if I could get this Vengevine. Nope. Uh, Squee, Squee. And I guess I could. Discard Rootwalla, tap Vengevine, or tap my other Bazaar. That's proper card disadvantage at that point, though. I would have Wasteland Force of Will in my hand when I tap that, and I'd have to go down to one. I could discard the second Bazaar, sandbag this Rootwalla, try to trigger Vengevine next turn, or I could just take my free discards and card advantage. Okay, I'm going to take my free discards and card advantage. I attack for five, and I'm definitely Wastelanding them this turn. Red casts Underworld Breach. Black casts all the tutors in their deck. I'm going to go for the black. They're on a two-turn clock. Spinning top in the upkeep. Oh, changed their mind. Unta they started to tap mana, then changed their mind on it. Found a Scalding Tarn. Lotus Petal. Oh, if they just tinker here, we could be in trouble. Next turn, I could dig for a blue card for Force, but right now I don't have that available. Oh, wait. Uh, they can't really tinker here because of... Luris. Like, they could play Tinker for Vault Key, but they can't have a Bolas to at all or Sphinx in their deck. They did assemble Underworld Breach Lotus Petal, which is not as good as Underworld Breach Black Lotus, but with Ancestral Recall here, this value breach... Ah, they had it! Okay, I think I was one turn away from stability here. Like, one more turn of selection, I find any blue card and we're cooking. Yeah, now they can Lotus Petal Breach out here. I'm going to make them do it, but they should win here. No, they have Time Vault, Manifold Key. Black Lotus is in their deck somewhere. Yep. Just a little short here. Spreading Seas in this main deck. That's terrifying. Cool tech, though. Great against Urza Saga and Bizarre Baghdad. And you can cast it with Luris. It's a can tripping Stone Rain in a lot of matchups. Really cool. I'm just going to give them an opportunity to mess up here. I don't know how they would mess this up, but I'm going to give them the chance to do it. Uh, just milling out the rest of their deck. I also get to see their deck as they do this. There's the Black Lotus. There's a Vamp Tutor. I don't have a Noxious Revival in my hand, which doesn't matter anyway, because they can mill me out and then target me with Ancestral. Just checking my list for anything that cares about anything. Nope, we're just dead. Okay, I'm okay conceding at this point. Breach is a tight little combo. Happens fast. Okay, do I have any sideboard for this? I don't know that I want Ley Lines. That does cut what just happened, off. But if I'm cutting counter spells for that, and I'm a deck that's already mulling to 5 or 4 or 3 to find a Bizarre Baghdad, do I really want to also add Leyline into that mix? 
I think force of will, force of vigor, mind break, trap, force of negation should just do enough here. I'm going to submit no sideboard and go for it. Okay, two powders in this hand. I'm just going to powder it off. Full seven powder. Okay, here we go. Our first seven card hand we've ever seen in our lives. The two Venge Vines are freebies to discard. I would have to draw into a hollow one to actually get these Venge Vines into play this turn because if I find a Rootwalla, you don't get to discard four cards. Noxious Revival could hit their graveyard as well if I just like knock out their brain freeze on a turn where it matters. I'm going to tap Bazaar now. Okay, Venge Vine, Venge Vine. And this is actually interesting because if I hold this Rootwalla, I could definitely have my Venge Vines in play next turn. I think I just take the good discard and keep my interaction. No hollow one. Disappointing. Very close to the nuts here. But I do have force blue card, force green card, and a good chance of Venge Vines next turn. Scalding Tarn, Mox Ruby, Orcish Bowmasters. This card is really fucking shitty. <laughs> okay. Uh, I did not account for this one. Probably should have some theories in my deck. Pyrokinesis. Okay. Tough beats. Let's see if I can overwhelm this thing with... Uh, Venge Vines right now. Okay. I get to discard Rootwalla, Rootwalla, Master of Death. I do get to trigger the Venge Vines. Bowmaster has to choose targets before anything else happens. I do get a three toughness creature. Was I supposed to put one Venge Vine into play last turn and save the other one in my hand? I guess I could have done that. Then discard the second Venge Vine this turn. And their life total would be a lot lower already. This is still pretty gnarly, and I don't have to tap Bazaar Baghdad again. If they just trade off Orc Army, and then my creatures are bigger than theirs, that is a strat. That could work. Oh, they're not a Luris deck anymore. I just noticed that. No Companion, which probably means they boarded in some giant Tinker thing, like Sphinx of the Steelwind, or they boarded in Leyline of the Void. Manifold Key resolves. I don't need to interact with all that just yet. Master of Death comes back. And I'm just going to go to combat here. Pressure the Bowmaster. They predictably just took their beats here. And I am not tapping Bizarre. Not letting them kill my creatures. And trade off with Vengevine again. Okay, Leyline of the Void confirmed. That is the thing that they gave up Lurus for. But if you're giving up Lurus for that anyway, maybe you should just bring in Sphinx of the Steelwind as well. I should probably plan for that possibility. Do I force a Vigor here? I'm going to have to go to clean up anyway. And I'm not going to tap Bazaar. I'm going to force the, the key and the ley line. And I'm going to pitch the other force to do it because Noxious Revival still pressures Breach on its own, where Force of Vigor doesn't do anything on its own. Drew a green card immediately, but it is another Noxious Revival. And they're at three, and my hand is full of interaction. This Bowmaster versus Bazaar game is very. And we won. This is a great image of, uh, you don't have to do shit just because it's there. You can simply not play into your opponent's cards. Okay, Pyrokinesis, largely in the deck to deal with Bowmaster. I I'm back on the level now. My bad. I let one slip by the goalie. And didn't get punished. Oh, I guess I should cut. I mean, the Blazing Root Wall is red for Pyrokinesis. The Basking Root Wall is green for Force of Vigor. Both of these cards matter. I wonder if you ever shave a serum powder, or if that's just too essential. I could shave a wasteland, maybe? Okay, yell at me if that's wrong, but it makes sense to me if mana denial is not a huge part of this matchup, and if they're not going to have tabernacle. We got to keep seven again. Bad news for everyone who's not me. Keep. Playline of the Void, there's that. That's bad news for me. I just need a green card, though, and I can still cast Hollow One. Good taxi probe, have a look. That's one spell for Mindbreak Trap. Ponder, that's two spells. Did not shuffle. Would be sick to just draw a Hollow One or a Rootwalla or a green card here. Second Bazaar. Okay, we send it. Okay, uh, Serum Powder, Rootwalla get discarded for sure. I don't really want to give up on Squee yet. I guess Master of Death is just Squee. The decision is, do I want a second Bazaar in the mix here, or do I want to have my engine set up for if I get the, the Leyline answered? Because Bazaar is much worse with Leyline in play. Okay, I'm going to discard these three, cast Rootwalla, cast Hollow One, and just stay set up in case I find a green card. 
I play a lot of them. This is where they reveal their Wasteland deck. Upkeep, Cycling Lorien revealed. I can't interact with that. Got an Underground Sea, draw for turn. That shuffled away the Ponder. There was one card in the Ponder they wanted, and then two cards they didn't. Mistress Bauble, whatever. Is my top card a green card? You can tell me. That's one spell. There's the Underground Sea. Green card, green card. Master of Death. Okay. I think I should tap Bizarre here. I'm just really looking for green cards, and the window is shrinking. Okay, sw Squee. I could just hold a Force Blue card, Force Blue card, and Wasteland them at this point. Give up on Force of Vigor, and just go Scrappy. That's what I'm going to do. Wasteland the Black, because that casts Orcish Bowmaster. Float to the blue. Combat. Nothing. Okay, they're dead in a few hits here, and I have two free counter spells in my hand, and they have one land. Fingers crossed. That's going to be the most interesting decision this game, whether I was supposed to hold on to Force of Vigor and try to unlock my engine, or just win through the ley line. Okay, Strip Mine is a powerful spell that cuts off my draw engine, but my draw engine was already off, and my hand is already my plan to attack three times. <laughs> and I'm a savage who just draws another bizarre Baghdad. Off the top. Bang. I mean, I'm not going to tap it, but there it is. Get in their head. Brainstorm. I'm not going to fight over this. That's spell one for Mindbreak Trap. They know about these two. They don't know about these two. And we are seeing the strength of this particular Bizarre deck in that Leyline of the Voids in play, and we're just like, ahead anyway. If they play a Tabernacle, I lose. But I don't know if that card is usually in Breach decks. I just have to hope it's not, because they don't really have a plan for it, except deleting my hand to dig frantically for Wasteland. Versus Saga was the play. That one's a little dangerous. If they could start chump blocking next turn and then tutor up a win on the following one. Okay, I'm going to put them to three here. And Urza Saga is the type of thing that could stabilize the game without casting a spell. But unless they suddenly dump out a bunch of Moxin from their hand, they have to fetch to two to chump block hollow one. Then they can chump block again. Then they have a two two that has to chump block again. Force of Vigor. Now the options on activating Bizarre, digging for a green card, are there. In we go. Fetching to two. They have to go to one to chump block Hollow One. I'm not worried about getting breached out because I'm holding two Mind Break Traps. They might tutor for Pithing Needle here, but then they're just dead on board. I don't think that's something they can afford to do. They probably have to get Lotus and try to breach me, which is not going to work. They're not trying to chump block. They are just grabbing something from their deck here. It is Black Lotus. Zero spells cast so far for Mind Break Trap. Okay, that's one spell cast. I'm going to Force of Will it. Or no, Force of Negation's better. Let's get rid of it. Exiling Master of Death. If they fight over this, that's two spells. Then I could Force it again, and it either gets countered or it turns on Mind Break Trap. Spell Pierce. Okay, that's two spells. Force of Will targeting Spell Pierce. Now either Breach is countered or this Mind Break Trap's on. Oh, they can't force either because they're at one. <laughs> out like a boss. Okay, they went out on their own terms. GG's. That was sweet. Turn zero ley line. Just put five power into play and keep up a handful of free interactions. On to the next round. If you're looking to run a CEDH or 1v1 tournament, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With Command Tower's intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle deckless submission and player management with just a few clicks. Players just need to scan the event's QR code for access to the full tournament bracket, including seamless pairings and real-time standing updates. Take the guesswork out of tournament organizing. Try Command Tower for your next event. On the play again for round three. No bizarre gonna mulligan. I've had the one Chalice and not one of the four Bazaars in my opening seven so many times. Hurts to mulligan a Chalice. That card's so stupid, especially on the play. No Luris from the opponent. Also, just between last round and the round before it and the game that I lost. Did I lose the game last round or was that a 2-0? I don't remember. But when you mull to four versus when you keep seven, just so insane different in quality, which is like obviously true. But this deck especially, compared to some of the other Bizarre decks, like Dredge can go to one, and if it's Bizarre, they're still heavily favored. This deck, with all the pitch spells and wanting to get engines together, it's a different calculation. 
Okay, so I have Vengevine, Root Wallace, Wee Master of Death, and I have to put two of these on the bottom. I want, like, basically all these cards. Um, Mental Misstep is going, and I can dump Root Walla and keep my, my engine. I think that's better. There are Root Wallas in the deck. There are Hollow Ones in the deck. Discard Squee, Vengevine, and Noxious Revival here, I guess. Or I could take one turn and just hope they don't turn one me. I'm going to go for that. I'm going to discard the Master of Death and kind of high roll this. I do have Force of Vigor, which breaks up some of the stuff that could happen in Vintage. But discarding my blue card when I'm holding Force doesn't feel great. I got Kataxian probed. Now they know what they have to play around. Tundra. Uh-oh. If they go Mox Lavinia here, the game is over. Mana Crypt. That is not going to cast Lavinia. All Breacher, that's a, a Mamma Jamma that will be difficult. Very disappointed I didn't keep up the, the Force of Will now. Do I have any out to this in the main deck? I guess what I have to do is just naturally draw cards until I can discard two Root Wallas or make a Hollow One and just give them two treasures. Or I can hope this Mana Crypt kills them. That's my real win con. Hold up Force Blue card, Force Green card. And hope that the crypt makes them dead before I am. Manifold key resolves. Untapping mana crypt, you got it. Urza saga. I'm gonna force that killing the key. I wanna leave crypt in play because that's my win gone. And they know I have force blue card. Okay, so I'm taking three damage a turn. They're taking 1.5 damage a turn on average. Gotta hope for some, some bad rips. And Hall Breacher is not even like Narset, where I could tap Bazaar on their turn and see one new card. Okay, another Saga. We're dead. White Bloom Adventure. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Fine. Okay, punished immediately by leaving the shields down for one turn. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that. Irokinesis is coming in. Misdirection doesn't seem important versus initiative. Force of Negation. I mean, they are a tanker deck, but I think that the, the weakest pitch counter should go. This color scheme definitely could represent Lavinia. I think this is how I'm going to do this. Just bring out the weakest pitch spells, one of the Wastelands and the Noxious Revival, and try to do it like this. Try to fade that turn one Hall Breacher. That's really hard to do in Vintage, by the way. It has to be Black Lotus or Mana Crypt or multiple Moxin. One Mox, one Soul Ring. Don't do that. Got a Mulligan this one. It doesn't have the card we need. Got a Mulligan this one too. Okay, gonna powder my five, and I'm gonna put, I think, Squee and Pyrokinesis back in. Powder those, and we found a bazaar. Eep. And they have lay multiple ley lines. Gotta find a green card now. And I can't use Master of Death as an engine to do it, but I do have Mind Brew Trap and Mental Misstep, which are my standalone hits. Oh, they kept a hand with no action, just two ley lines. They must have force to protect it. Second bazaar. I'm not going to put that into play because that could be something I'm happy to discard if we get there. I have to be thinking about every card as a potential loot at this point. Okay. Black Lotus. Pithing Needle. Cool. Have to bazaar now. Uh, discard Serum Powder. Oh, I guess I should have mental missed up that. Uh, discard Serum Powder, Bazaar Baghdad, and Force of Will. And I'm going to mist up this now. And now Mind Break Trap is on. They forced. I Mind Break both of these. And then they just kill me with Land White Bloom Adventure. Soul Guide Lantern. Okay. Has to exile Black Lotus. That's really funny. And they used the extra to draw a card. Which did find the land. Okay, I found Root Walla. I'm going to dig for a green card. No love. Discard Root Walla. I got something in play now. They did find land. They got two cards left in their hand. And they passed it back. Squee. I think I'm just going to pass this turn. And if they're not doing anything, I'm going to try to build my resources up to have a more effective bazaar. Cycling Lorian revealed. Good chance they have Lavinia next turn. Underground Sea found and played. Wasteland. Okay. I'm going to Wasteland their white. That makes it a lot harder to cast Lavinia. Even if they find the second land. Alright, going by the edge of our seat here. 
The skin of our ass. Force of will. Okay, that can protect my force of vigor when I find the green card. They're missing land drops over there, which means their hand is either two drops or reactive spells. Strip mine. <laughs> the pain in my ass. Okay. They used it to cast Time Vault, though. That's lucky. Okay. Time Vault's in. And now that I see the strip mine, I should probably tap Bazaar while I still can. Okay. Pyrokinesis, green card, force of negation. Or red card, squee. <laughs> not green card. That's what I actually wanted and did not receive. Okay, there's a green card. I'm going to attack. And hopefully I'll get a chance if they just strip mine me to force of vigor in response. Okay, force of vigor in response, hitting the two ley lines. I suspect they'll force me back based on how this game has gone. Yep, there's that. Force your force. And then I will at least activate Bazaar and get something in my graveyard. Oh, <laughs> tough. I guess if I had... No, I would have ran out of cards by now. And this shows me the win two turns from now. They just tutor a key. Okay, probably dead here. And Mox Sapphire also makes Constructs Force of Vigor. All right, didn't draw Force of Vigor, we're dead. Okay, another uh, lots of hate plus Urza Saga being both a board stabilizer and half a combo with infinite turns. We've lost the two decks with Urza Saga and we beat the deck without it. Or did that one have? The Breach deck probably had Saga too. No, it did. Okay, every deck has Urza Saga. On to the next round. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is available exclusively through Coalesce Apparel. This Magic Player owned business is a staple of our community. They keep this channel on the air, and it's my pleasure to partner with them for this product. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market. They have awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off your order only at coalesceapparel.shop. I'm on the draw for round four. My opponent's username is Restrict Hollow One. So we're in a good spot here, and I get to keep seven against the person who specifically hates Dredge. Bobble resolves. Bobble targeting yourself. Mox Pearl. Mana Crypt. A lot going on over there. Put Luris in hand. Okay. That is a legal sequence of events. Rootwalla. Bazaar activate. Rootwalla, two serum powders into the bin. They didn't even give me a land to strip mine, so nothing to think about there. I didn't find a blue card to go with my second interaction spell, unfortunately. Crypt did not damage them. Cycling Lorien revealed. This will cast Luris, which I'm going to counter. And a vault. They got a lot going on. Orcish Bowmaster. Well, I'll counter that instead. Force pitching misdirection. And they forced me right back. Good game. And we're not dead yet. Not actually, but uh, I was able to overcome Bowmaster last time because opponent had nothing else going on and I had a Vengevine going, which is not true at this time. Strip mine, take out your C. And I think I'm just going to chill for a minute. You can't chill forever, but they do have Mana Crypt. They could die to that. They don't have a blue source. And I can hold off on this Orc Army beatdown until I can throw some stuff into play. And they can't afford to attack with the Orcish Bowmaster because I could throw a Root Walla down in front of it. Okay, now I have a Hollow One. This is worth moving on. I'm going to discard Master, Master, <laughs> come crawling faster. Uh, and I think my second Bazaar can go. Or I could keep a Master for Force and discard Noxious Revival. It didn't work out great last time I tapped out of blue. All right, I'm going to discard Noxus Revival and Bazaar. They can ping me for two here. They get a 3-3, three, three, but I have a 4-4. Four, four. Hollow one, Wasteland, pass. Force blue card in my hand. Won their flip. They are directly on expectation. They won, they lost, they won. Mox Jet. Oh, I was supposed to force that. This casts Luris, and then they can just do whatever. Yeah, I w had my head down for like one second. And now they have a draw engine online. Yeah, it, it might seem aggressive and weird, but I was supposed to force that mox. And with Luris's lifelink, they're winning the race now. Okay. This one's over. Okay, Orcish Bowmaster confirmed. Pyrokinesis in. We've seen this before. 
And they're also Esper. I have to at least think about Caracas. Do you ever shave a squee? If you expect Graveyard, hate squeeze pretty bad. But if you either beat or ignore or or they don't have graveyard hate we is your engine okay i'm gonna shave off of what i believe are the weaker of the free spells and the caracas is keep my engine okay we get to keep seven again this hand puts multiple creatures into play oh my goodness the nuts okay it's even better than i thought this is why you choose to register this deck like we've seen it fail a few times, or we mull to four and get leylined or whatever, but then sometimes you put lethal into play on, on turn two. It's not quite lethal. It's close. No, it is. Yeah, yeah. Turn two lethal with force backup. Underground C, Mock Sapphire, Mistress Bobble, Bobbling me. Or nope, Bobbled yourself. Okay. Orcish Bowmaster, Force of Will, Force me back. That's fine. You've got a Bowmaster, it kills Basking Rootwalla, and then I just smoosh for a zillion. Okay, I drew Force of Will, which means if I tap Bazaar, I could come up with Force Blue card again. But if I tap Bazaar, Avenge Vine dies. Okay, just gonna hope they can't kill me here. Demonic Tutor, powerful card. Shit. <laughs> well, that'll do. I mean, my deck has Wastelands in it, but we're in trouble. Uh, well, Vengevine is one of the ways you can beat Tabernacle, because if I cast two creatures, I just get to attack for lethal here. Now I'm going to... Uh, of course, there's the blue card on top. Now I'm going to... Like, they have to pay for Bowmasters. This isn't totally free. I still have Force Blue card, Force Green card. I just have to wait until I have a Hollow One and a Rootwall in hand, or two Rootwallas. Searched up another Underground Sea. Raft Digger's Cage. Uh, that ties to Force of Vigor. That's fine. A okay, Force of Vigor hit the Mox in the Cage. Probably didn't need to do that right away. Maybe if they draw Saga, I'm going to regret it. Gallus on zero. Go. Okay, we're back to hoping that two creatures show up eventually. And if they want to keep their Bowmaster, they have to Rashad and Port themselves every turn. <laughs> There's the Saga immediately. Immediately punished for the thing that I identified as probably... Worth doing. Dumbass. Force of Vigor. Okay. Now they have to let Bowmaster die if they want to use Saga. I guess if they have a mana source. It's the same. Yeah, a land. They can't have a Mox here. Cycling Lorien revealed. Sure. Another Underground Sea. On deck. There's one creature. If they make Constructs, they have to pay for them. They haven't attacked me for any damage this game. The one damage I've taken was the point from Bowmaster. They're probably going to get Lotus here and try to Lurus Lotus. And I have Force for that. Lurus. Force. Pitching Force. Do you have Force Blue card as your last two? No. Okay. We're back to chilling. Force. Back in my hand. Okay. And they are under the squeeze from this Bowmaster. Brainstorm. Okay. Powerful card, but they are on pretty low resources over there. Merchant Scroll. Okay, this is probably going to get Ancestral. Yep. This would be a great turn to draw a blue card, especially if it's Mental Misstep. Pyrokinesis. Okay, now a red card unlocks the Bowmaster. Just playing slow here. There's the Ancestral. I have three pitch spells and nothing of color to pitch to them. Okay, they've decided they should be pushing for damage, which also removes a blocker. But this makes me think they have another Bowmaster in hand now. Rootwalla? Wasteland, okay. I can put Wasteland into play. I'm not going to waste the Tabernacle yet because my creatures are... They don't exist. Tabernacle's worse for my opponent than it is for me right now. Okay. They want to be out here paying three men every turn to keep their dummies. That's a deal. Pyrokinesis kills two, the same as it kills one. And they're paying for all of them. Sensei's top resolves... Now deciding how many of these they want to attack with. Just the Orc Army. Cool. There's Squee. This can challenge the Bowmasters. I'm kind of interested in waiting until I have a blue card to force back. Because I'm not under a lot of pressure. And the second my Vengevines trigger, they lose. I just have to be careful about this. Yeah, they didn't pay for their Orc Army. They did pay for their Bowmasters. Orcs are getting in for damage. 
I get six more draw steps this game. Hollow one. Okay, interesting. Now I can trigger my Venge Vines whenever. But I take four and they get a 4-4 four, four if I tap my Bazaar. I'd like to find a blue card and start a fight in their end step if I can get away with it. But we do have a Hadoken Blast to try to win the game in a desperate situation. I wonder if I should be wasting the Underground Seas or one of them. Because I don't care about Tabernacle. I'm either going to get it done with Venge Vines that have haste or I'm not. Okay, there's a blue card. I think what I'm going to do is let them pay for their Bowmasters, Wasteland, and Underground Sea in combat, and then try to kill them next turn. A third Bowmaster, wow. Okay, they are really going for it here. This is going to tap them out, unless they want to, like, Ancestral Recall me for a big burst of damage. Yeah, out of their graveyard somehow. But this is going to tap so much of their mana. Okay, do I waste now? No, I think I wait until combat to wasteland them. Yeah, in case they found another land. You waste your underground, see? They'll probably spin with top. Okay, that burnt off. Okay, they're spinning with top. I'm going to respond to this with the pyrokinesis. One, two, three. Good squee on this. They forced it down to two. I force your force. They force again, they're at one. They fetch, they're at one. And I'm going to have two attackers next turn. Spinning top in response. They can't force here. They're down to one. They need graveyard hate, but they can't even cast surgical. They can't cast a mox. Yeah, there we go. All right. Got to take your time, grind through it. Sometimes we're a control deck. Okay, that was a very Bowmaster heavy plan. I wonder if I want theory on top of all these pyros or if the pyro is enough when it's enough tabernacle confirmed got to bring in this wasteland that i shaved i don't think i want ghost quarter on top of it i think that's mostly for bizarre mirrors we saw graph diggers cage we saw Ursa saga i need my force of vigors mind break trap this lowers my blue count but they're not really doing like stuff that plays into mind break trap naturally i think that's my cut Gonna try it. Here we go. That was a cool game. Good showcase of the deck. Okay, Bizarre, Caracas, and Engine Online. Keep. Basic Island. Mox Sapphire. Time Walk. You got it. Mox Jet. Mana Crypt. Okay, they're gonna put Luris in hand. Okay. They can't cast Luris with what I could see. They have one unknown card in their hand, plus what they're about to draw. And Caracas can bounce Luris. Okay, this does cast Luris, but they're playing around Force. Cool. All right. Or no, they're representing Bowmaster. That's what's happening. Okay, I'm going to drop Bazaar and pass. Passing gives up on the ability to Vengevine here. Oh, we're suddenly a PO deck? What the fuck? Okay, Um. well, Bazaar, Baghdad, find Force of Will. All right, no love there. Squee, squee, Root Walla into play, I guess. That was the wrong root wall. I should have put a red one in because force of vigor matters more. Whoops. Yeah, these little decisions matter a lot. And that was a uh, very bad PO for me, especially considering I have boarded out two mind break traps. They did a good job hiding that from me. If I was more in tune with present day vintage, maybe I read that better. Ugh. Okay, yeah, they're just going off now. Found Fluster and a second PO off their, their draw three. Okay, they draw another three here. Basic Island. Bobble. Now they're incentivized to replay Luris because they have a real reason to do that. The Ixlet Jailer. That means Squee doesn't come back. <laughs> All right, well, I got to give myself a chance to draw Pyrokinesis right now because we actually do somehow completely stabilize against that. Uh, strip Mine, Wasteland. I'm going to Wasteland the Underground Sea and pass here. They can't cast Luris with what I could see. Luris, Mana Crypt are two of the five cards in their hand. Strip Mine, cool. Well, better activate this. And we're dead. All right, you got me. Yeah, they went pretty heavy on that opening salvo. And me with two, Force or two Mind Break Traps in my graveyard kind of stinks versus P.O., 
but they did it on my end step, so Mind Break Trap wouldn't help there. Just having Force of Negation instead of Force of Will in my opening hand cost me that game. But that's Vintage. And they appropriately respect the graveyard, which is what you need to do when you play this format. On to the final round. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. It's the final round. I'm on the play and I'm keeping a seven. Let's go. I got two Root Wallas and Force Blue card, Force Blue card. If I could find a Hollow One or Vengevine here, we're cooking. If I don't find one of those things, we're limping around. If I find not a Hollow One or Vengevine, but I do find a Squee or Master of Death, I'm cool with that. Then the engine's online. A two Root Wall is backed by Force Blue card. Force Blue card won't win a game on its own. I do need something else going on here. But the hand is a great keep. What if I find Vengevine and Hollow One? Is that too greedy to say out loud? Opponent also kept seven. Tap my bazaar. Moment of truth. How hard are we hitting? Not that hard. Root Walla, Root Walla. Misdirection. No, Misdirection, I could steal their Ancestral Recall, which is not so. Mind Break Trap's better on its own. I'm actually going to discard the Mind Break Trap because now that I have Chalice for zero, I have big dreams of misdirecting a Ancestral. Chalice for zero in. Let's hope that locks out two or three cards in their hand. And discarding Mind Break Trap when I have all these other cards, should indicate to them where I am. Well, Wasteland's pretty good. I need a Noxious Revival or another Bazaar to keep this game moving. Okay, another blue card. In for two. You're dead in ten turns. And there are decks that Chalice on Zero actually is that devastating against. We don't know if we're playing in shops here yet, or just some deck. If they didn't Ancestral yet. They could do it in my upkeep. That would be great. Another Force Blue card. Okay, I can counter their next three spells. I wonder if this is just Bug. Trusty old Bug. They did it. I will target this with Misdirection and Exile. Mind Break Trap. The worst possible, but we played to it. Yeah, I'll target me. Thanks. Boing. All right, just more Force Blue card. Is three pair a poker hand you can have? Because I have it. I have a full house and then another set. <laughs> this is a screenshot. Yeah, what do you think about this hand? Honestly, it's not even good until I find a bazaar. I guess it depends on how all in they are. If they're a deck that's just going to start casting Collector Roofs and Tarmogoyfs, this hand isn't that good against them because they could wait through it eventually. If they are trying to do something fucko like a Fast Bond or Resolve Tinker, I'm very well suited to fight that game. Tarmogoyf it is. Force pitching, negation. Come on, Bazaar. Blazing Ruwala, someday. This is the first game we've had to play without a Bazaar. We've got Pithing Needled a few times, uh, or somebody wasted our Bazaar when we already had something going on, but this is the first time where we're slightly ahead with options and facing down a Bazaarless board. A playing Baseju rather than dealing with my Chalice of the Void. Okay, they could gain control of my Chalice by kicking this. That's really funny. Um, I don't care. I guess if they tinker away the Chalice, that's really good. But I can't afford to force this 2-1 because it doesn't beat my creatures. It doesn't win the race, and it doesn't kill them outright in combat. It's a trade. And I can waste them off blue here. That's really good. They didn't take the trade. Okay. I wonder if they have equipment in their deck, or what's going on with that. You generally don't play Visage if you have another land, so hopefully they're just off a of color here. And Chalice is symmetrical, it doesn't matter who controls it. Okay, no block, no attack. This thing is just here to for the art. Going in again. Okay, we get a trade, and I can waste this Visage. Put you back down to one land, and hope Root Walla just holds for another eight turns. Cenote Scout. When it enters the battlefield, it explores. If this hits a non-land, I'm completely stuffed here. If it hits a land, we're still playing. All right, I'll take my chances. I don't want to force this thing. Please reveal a land. Ouch. All right. So we're playing against Simic Merfolk. 
That's what's go actually happening here. And by letting them have a 2-2, I now have to pump the brakes and find a bazaar. <laughs> but unfortunately for my opponent, I'm really good at this. Okay, Serum Powder, Rootwalla. The Noxious Revival's tricky because that's more bazaars. If I just discard a Force of Negation here, I'm actually going to run with that. I think it's more important to make sure I have bazaars as this game moves forward. Madness out Rootwalla, cast Hollow One. Okay, now I'm bigger than you again. And you're still playing on one basic forest. I still have Force Blue card in my hand, and I can get Bazaar back if you have another Wasteland. Veil of Summer. Yikes. I don't know what that's doing. Oh, it's dumping out all the, the Moxin. Right, right, right. Yeah, that is how this works. Chalice does say counter. Okay. Yeah, Veil of Summer unlocks any Moxin that are in the hand. Oh, that the Black Lotus too. I might just die here. Am I? I don't think there's a universe where I'm supposed to actually force that. Yeah, they just get some mana and pass the turn. That That's fine. All right. Could have been worse. Another Noxious Revival. I'm going to attack with everybody here. They can't take too many hits from this Hollow One. If they want to eat a Root Wall, I don't care. That'll put them to lethal on board and they can't block anymore. Or they can't block other Root Wallas anymore. And I don't think I'm going to Bizarre right now. I have Force Blue card and then Force No Blue card. I don't know right now if I need to dig for another blue card yet. Wasteland. All right. Well, I will soon have to commit to a decision. Activate Bazaar. Uh, Noxious Revival. Noxious Revival. Rootwalla are my discards here. I'm just going to hold up Double Force with Lethal on board and hope it does what it's supposed to. Give up on the continuing to Bazaar strat. If they come up with a Cavern of Souls, I might still lose this game. But they have to chump block, go to one. Unless they have some crazy tech I've never seen in my life. I've seen Oko in my life. Oko, pitching force of will. Two cards left. If they force this, I force that. Force. We're all in. They got one card left. All right, cool. What's your last card? Does it beat me? That was a battle. That was awesome. It definitely all of the red removal in here. The only white mana we saw was under uh, Mox Pearl, and I don't know how many Mox in they're actually going to play. On the draw with Chalice, I think this card is worse also against their deck in general. We we saw Pearl and Lotus show up, but I don't know that I need to be that respectful of that. We did see Wasteland, which makes me more interested in Noxus Revival. Gotta assume they're going to have counterplay of some kind for Force of Vigor. I'm looking at Mind Break Traps here, because I don't Expect them to cast a lot of spells in one turn if they're Simic Merfolk. Maybe five is too many, or six is too many, and I'll just stop at five. The four Pyros and a Fury. I imagine this deck has Hall Breacher in it. It might, it probably plays Cavern of Souls. Let's do it. Okay, two Bazaars, Engine, Vengevine. I can tap Bazaar and then decide if I want to get aggro or get control. I would prefer if they didn't cast Graf Digger's Cage here. They didn't cast Graf Digger's Cage. We're going to get an Ancestral on my upkeep. Uh, misdirect it, misdirect it, JK. You got me this time. Bizarre number three. Okay, let's see. Do I draw a creature? Do I draw interaction? I drew interaction. The Serum Powder can go. Vengevine can go. Squeak can go. And I'm going to cast Hollow One and hold up Force Blue card. We saw multiple Thieving Skydivers. If they have, like, Black Lotus, two mox, and they could steal my hollow one. This strip mine's actually great for me because I'm holding triple bazaar. This is not my squeeze point right now. Squeak comes back. The misdirection, oh no. And they've already used their thing. A bazaar Baghdad, and I'm just going to activate it now because I have force blue card. And squee, squee, master. Attack for four. I'm going to play another hollow one. Still can't figure out this venge vine. But my engine is fully online and I'm applying pressure. Tabernacle. Okay. This kills the hollow ones. I have Wasteland ready, but now we actually do have to get the Vengevine going. Can't pay. Can't pay. Fury. Okay. Fury can get Vengevine back. And I'm holding Squeeze and Masters, so this is just free money right now. Squeeze, Squee, Master into the graveyard. Play out Wasteland and pass. I'm holding the Root Wallet because if I get to Fury something next turn, that 
or well, oh, I've squeezed a pitch. All right, yeah, I'll have red cards in my hand by then. Not going to wasteland if I don't have to. They're going to clean up discarding Veil of Summer. I feel favored here, but that could break open with a piece of graveyard hate. I have so many idiots that I could tap two bazaars a turn and still be up cards. Okay, squee, squee, master, discarded. And then bazaar, discard, root walla, root walla, master, trigger, vengevine. Root walla, root walla, master, walla, walla, vengevine triggers. And I'm not going to wasteland tabernacle until the end of their turn because it's a legendary land. They can't play a second copy. And if I waste it now, they can just play out another one. But now I feel massively favored. Force blue card, pyrokinesis red card. I have their most potent piece of hate covered with wasteland, and then the second wasteland in my hand covers the next tabernacle if they have another. It looks like they were kind of all in on strip mine tabernacle, or they cast ancestral too. Their opening hand was good, they just haven't done anything since then, unfortunately for them. And I'm over here drawing five cards a turn. Easy game. There's a Vengevine. Can I get two of them? Can we just get it done here? Hand's so big, can't even see it. Vengevine, squee, squee, discarded. Activate Bazaar again. Oh, I should have put Hollow One on top. Ah, yeah, if I had revived a Hollow One, that actually would have. Or I could pitch Fury here. That's 4, 8, 9, 10. That's still not lethal. It doesn't matter. Okay. Rootwalla, Master. Or I want to hold Masters at this point. Force of Vigor. I have a lot of Masters. Yeah, that just gives me Force Blue card on top of everything else. Wasteland. Attack for 6. They're at six. I'm actually going to Noxious Revival. A target card from a graveyard on top of its owner's library. I'm going to target Veil of Summer, a card that is not useful to them and they can't even cast. I put that. Uh, this is like kind of a build your own time walk. We haven't seen this interaction come up yet. Oh, they had to force that. That's so funny. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to misdirect this. Misdirect Force of Will, Pitching Master of Death. I'm going to change the target to Misdirection. This works in the rules, even though it's weird. Okay, Spell Pierce. That's fine. We got a little fight out of them. They did some stuff. I'm going to hold on to my Force Blue card, though. Wasteland beats Tabernacle. Force beats most other things. And we got a W at the end. Okay, this deck, powerful and fun. I think we did showcase the full range of it. I presented a turn two Goldfish, 20 damage by turn two. One time, I, we ground deep into the late game a few other times. That last game was the best one we've done, where it just had two bazaars and six squee effects. That was awesome. That's what you really want to be doing with your life. But we also saw how potent Orcish Bowmasters is against the deck, how potent Wasteland is against the deck, how potent Urza Saga is against the deck, all of which are just cores of the format right now. This list has kind of evolved a bit. This one right now that I'm playing, that was sent to be my by King of the Depths, it is still on just Wastelands and Strip Mines as lands that aren't bizarre. A lot of the Countervine decks that are winning these days, uh, more recently, like I, he sent me this a few weeks ago, a lot of them have adopted more mana. Like there is a Hogak deck that plays Deathrite Shaman, four main deck collector Oof, Mox, Black Lotus, stuff like that. You have a Maya, so your Bazaar can tap for mana. Uh, you could also pay for Tabernacle sometimes. Those lists have started to hybridize, and you'll see more of those out there. And we saw you know, why you might be incentivized to do that in those those losses that felt completely unwinnable against pretty normal cards. It's not even like Leyline and Craftiger's Cage locked me out. It was like Wasteland and Orcish Bowmaster. So watch yourself around those. But there are decks innovating on that. And we saw with careful play, you could beat it sometimes. This deck was a lot of fun. King of the Depths, thank you for asking me to play it. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.